Well, welcome everyone. I'm Ben from Australian Paramedical College and I have with me today Brody White from Medical Edge Australia based in, uh, in Melbourne, Victoria, but um, serving nationally uh, in the uh, emergency medical space. Um, Brody, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. This is a you know obviously unprecedented, uncharted waters we are in in the world in in every industry I think, and uh, I really want to hear from you uh, and what's going on in your industry. What does Medical Edge uh, do firstly, and how has services been impacted by the the COVID nineteen pandemic? Yeah, I guess pre COVID we're a pretty standard event medical services company. We've been operating for about ten years now. Um, and we operate nationally, mainly in Victoria and Tassie. Uh, and our business has a, a couple of different operational divisions. Firstly, event medical services, which is what we started with. Um, and that's obviously probably been the heaviest impact from COVID. Uh, secondly is our transport operations. So we've been providing transport services to government and non-government clients um, for the last five or six years. So we're moving patients around of low, medium and high acuity patients. So retrieval services as well as your routine hospital appointments. So. Um, the impact of COVID has been significant in our event operations because it's reduced our event operations fairly significantly, but our transport operations, it's increased the workload uh, probably two or three fold already and we're not even at the peak of COVID yet. So it's a fairly significant impact, but we've managed to be able to redeploy some of our event staff into other aspects of our operation, including uh, preventative measures like fever screening at workplaces and things like that. Um, but we've had to scale up significantly for our transport operations already. So you talk about fever screening. What does that um, look like for you? Is that a new s- service? Yeah, it, it is to a degree. So routinely for some of our government and, and non-government clients, we do health monitoring services. So essentially we put healthcare professionals, so registered paramedics, nurses, sometimes diploma qualified um, staff, as well as first responders, into workplaces or high risk events or areas where um, we need to make sure that staff are at at their prime so they're fit, healthy and ready for work. So these are normally in high risk environments like it might be a major emergency like a bushfire across the state or flooding or a workplace where they're they're exhausting themselves fairly significantly. So we would do a set of clinical observations and make sure that that patient's fit and well and suitable for work today. We've sort of altered that into a fever screening service to make sure that the patient doesn't exhibit any signs of COVID-19 prior to work. So try and actually reduce transmission and spread of COVID-19 to protect the workforce. Right. So, and so you you mentioned there too that you've had people in events, event medics, that now their role is being kind of redirected and their 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 responsibility is being redirected. So you. You have demand in that area and what are those roles and, and what qualification level are they? Yeah, so it varies. So I guess pre-COVID, the roles were very much a, a routine event medical service role. So they were they were attending major events or, or local community events and providing first aid and basic medical services. And this is staff um, starting from first responder staff who have advanced first aid qualifications, advanced resource and other vet sector qualifications through to our, our diploma staff and our, and our registered paramedics. Now they're, they're transitioned into attending a workplace um, pre-shift commencement for the workplace um, and providing um, fever screening services, so checking temperature, checking patients off to make sure they don't meet the Department of Health criteria around actual or suspected cases of COVID-19, isolating anyone that does meet those requirements or is at risk of transmission of spread of any infectious condition to the workforce. Uh, so it's a very different role for them from what they're used to. You know, They were attending to a you know, a sporting injury or a, a, a traffic crash at a motorsport event or similar, and now they're they're scanning or, or assessing 100, 200 patients every morning prior to them starting work. So it is still certainly being utilised. There's a, there's a lot of work for them to do. Um, it's different work, and it's it's not at the moment. It's not as busy as our event work. We used to look after over well, and we about a thousand events annually. We look after medical edge. Um, that's we pretty much had 90% of our events cancel. Um, for the foreseeable future, but we know that's that's not going to be a long-term thing. Um, but we've been able to redeploy those other staff into other areas of the business, and which is a really rapidly growing sector as well. You know, workplaces are looking at any way they can protect their workforce, particularly for essential services. And you've been hiring as well, is that correct? Yeah, so um, we've got an induction this week for, I think it's 14 new staff here in Melbourne um, to support our transport operations. 
and we've been redeploying our event staff into those other services to keep them busy as well. So um, there's still ample work for our staff. Well, you know, we look forward to watching this space, I guess. Um, it's anyone's guess where things are going, but I can imagine the demand for these kind of services is not going to be slowing down anytime soon. Not at all, yeah. We're, um, we're certainly in it for the long haul. You know, the modelling is all different from each um, health service, but we're looking at you know, at least probably three to six months of um, increasing workload uh, for COVID, I'd say at least. So I don't have a crystal ball, but um, yeah, certainly watch this space. And the patient transport operations, has that, and how, and has that been affected um, by the recent pandemic? Yeah, so um, I guess the government, federal and state government announcements really impact our operations from a workload perspective in patient transport. Um, so there was a recent um, stimulus package or a, a recent announcement around increasing the amount of um, uh, um, surgeries from an elective surgery perspective. So that increased our workload to a degree prior to COVID sort of initial impacts. Um, so now non-essential transports aren't occurring as often, but in addition to that, we've now got a significant increase in our normal inter-hospital transfers or even us responding to um, low to medium acuity triple zero cases in the community, particularly in Victoria. So our staff, our diploma qualified staff are the lead clinicians on those vehicles. So um, APC students, when they qualify with their, with their cert for a diploma, um, will actually be the lead clinicians on that vehicle after they've done some clinical placement hours with our staff as well. So they're responding into the community, they're, they're making in independent clinical decisions um, and taking patients to appropriate hospitals. Wow. So, Brady, now I want to just ask, there might be some um, people, some of our students and uh, prospective healthcare workers that are maybe concerned about the risks of, you know, frontline work like this. Um, can you talk about some of the measures that are taken in your services uh, to minimise the risk to healthcare workers, obviously, of exposure to this this virus and anything in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess, like, firstly, it's important to recognise that as healthcare workers, we're always going to be exposed to infectious disease. Um, and if we, you know, actually use our standard precautions and additional precautions appropriately, we're very well protected. But you know, our, our own internal staff have had, have raised concerns of just general concerns around you know, are we safe? Are we being protected? But, you know, any any organisation that, that's at the forefront of this um, is usually pretty solid around developing policies, procedures and making sure that people are safe. It's in our best interest to protect our workforce um, and we've got an obligation to and, and obviously we support our workforce 100%, so we want them to be fit and well. So we've developed um, a range of different measures. Mostly there's procedure-driven measures um, which are updated every 24, 48 hours at the moment because the definitions are changing so much around what's an actual or a suspected case of COVID. Uh, but we've also developed um, specific PPE packs around COVID, so specific to droplet transmission and, and transmission-based precautions. So there's specific kits that are in every one of our ambulances, in every one of our medic kits um, that are actually reducing the impact or the likelihood of transmission and spread. That's great. Well, Brody, it's probably all I want to talk about this morning, and uh, no doubt you're uh, you're busy and uh, obviously trying to keep abreast of how things are changing. Um, so, really appreciate your time this morning, Brody, and and all the best. Nice.